Hi, welcome to this SQL tutorial video. And today I'm doing a video um, on inserting into inserting data into a table that we know is missing. So in the the way I'm, what I'm thinking about here is imagine we've got um, a production or a source database and we've got a copy database. And our copy database is over time um, out of date. So we need to insert data in there that is missing. Um, so I've got uh, on screen here, I've got a, a database called training and I've got a database called training copy. Both of them have got the same tables in. And as you can see here in my training database in the employees table, I've got 22 rows. But in my training copy database, I've got eight rows. So I've got 14 rows missing that I need to insert into my training copy database. Uh, and I'm now going to show you how to do it. Now, something to, to bear in mind here um, about this <coughs> is our employees table, this table has got an identity column, which means its numbers are automatically generated. So when I'm doing this, um, I'm going to kind of show you a couple of different ways of doing it that allows for the identity column. So first of all, First thing you need to do is to work out what data is missing. So I'm going to start here. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of this training copy here. I'll format this a little bit to say select star from um, my employees uh, 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 table and I'll give it an alias of TE for training employees. Now, what you were able to do in SQL is you can write um, code that interacts with multiple databases. And in order to do that, you've got to reference the database and the schema and the table kind of in a fully qualified way. So you've got to include all three elements. I do have a video on this. I'll put a link to it in the description of this one. But what it allows us to do is we can say, OK, in a join, go to a different database, training copy in this case, our DBO schema, and there's our employees table. And I'm going to give this a different alias, obviously. Um, TCE for training copy employees and we're going to link it on the full name column here because the full name column is um, unique in this table um, okay so if I run that oh you uh, I've got order by but I need to make it uh, to a particular table so this now is the results. Now, all we're getting here is eight results. Because we've done it in a join, it's only returning the results for um, where, where the full names match. And that's not what we want. We want to see initially everything. Then we want to see what's missing. So let's change this to be a left outer join. Now we're getting 22 rows. We're getting eight rows, uh, sorry, 22 rows here that you can see from our employees table from the training database and then here we've got the results from our training copy database and you can see the first eight here um i get getting returned but we don't have any matches beyond employee j um so that's the missing elements anything here that is null is missing in our training copy database and that's what we're interested in so in order to find that information we can say we can add a condition to say where our training copy ID column is null. And that will return us 14 rows. And it's the data that is missing. And that's, that's exactly what we want. So now what we can say is, all right, it's missing from our training copy database. So let us get the values from the training, uh, sorry, from the, yeah, from the training employees database, uh, table. So we'll go get the full name. Um, Dates, the date, so is that everything? Full name, department, office, higher date, leave date, active, grade, supervisor. So now if I run that, we will get 14 results of data. And now, quite nicely, we can do an insert into our table. So if I do insert into... Um, Training copy employees. I should be able to run that and it will insert 14 rows. So now I will take that out and I will take out this condition and I'm going to put select star 
just put a comment on the rest of that line. If I run this now, you will see there's our employees, 22 of them, and there's a matching set of employees, 22 of them. So that's all good. We, 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 we've got all the missing data in there. Except the ID column here. The ID for employee R is 8. The ID for employee R here is 8. But then when we go a little bit further down, you can see that beyond the first eight rows, the IDs no longer match the original training table. And that's because we've got an identity um, the ID is an identity column, which means that those numbers are generated. So the last time anything was inserted in the training copy database, the last ID before this was 85. So it's started at 86 and it's gone down to 99. So we need to kind of think about that. Um, if we want these things to match, well, we need to tweak our code a little bit because um, SQL itself won't just let you insert into these columns. So let us try and um, get around that. So I'm just going to delete that data again. So we're now back as we were before, where we've got our missing 14 records here. And now we'll take, we'll add this condition again. So we're now left with just the 14 that we're going to insert. And now we can do this. And um, we should now include our identity column. So this is the full list of the columns we want to insert into our table. Now, um, if I do an insert, we are going to get an error, and that's fine. We'll deal with that. But if I try and insert into that, this error says, OK, you've got an explicit value identity column, and it says you can only insert if you, um, when you've got a column list. OK, so what we're missing here. Well, the first bit that we're missing here, because there's another issue as well to deal with. But now we're inserting all of this data with an identity column. It says you can't just insert into this. I need to know which columns you're going to insert into. So in that case, I've got to include each column um, named here. So I will specifically reference each column. Now that will get rid of this error, but I will get another error. So if I just do an insert now, okay, so we've got a different error. You cannot insert explicit value into identity column in this, this table when identity insert is set to off. So when you've got an identity column, you are not able to insert into identity column um, by default. You've got to make a little change before you can do that. So the change that you need to make is set, well, you can see this here, I'll just copy it from here, identity insert. Then you give you a table that you're inserting into, which is my training copy, and you make it on. And I'm just going to copy that and put it down here so I don't forget to turn it off. Because I do want my uh, column to have an identity insert so that SQL deals with that, but for this purpose, I want to quickly turn it off, insert a load of data in, then turn it back on and let SQL carry on. So, um, I can run all of this in one go because I've added these little um, uh, semicolons, but I won't. I'm just going to run it a line at a time. So this, first of all, we run this. Yep, it's run successfully. Now we go to here and we ought to be able to, we don't need the order by, um, run that 14 rows. And then we run that and we've turned it back on. And now if I um, get rid of that condition, get rid of that condition, and get rid of that and look at everything. And just turn off those bits so I don't accidentally turn it on again. And if you run this select, you'll see that the IDs now match. And our tables are now up to date. And that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it help, uh, helpful. Uh, any questions, please leave me comments. Um, thanks a lot for your time as always. See you next time.